Praise the Lord and welcome to the Bible Heritage Pentecostal Holiness Church. This is Pastor Randy Richardson and tonight we're going to do our next to the last study in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 6 through 12 and hopefully next Wednesday night we'll be able to wrap up our teaching in 2 Thessalonians. Uh, I've returned back to my office uh, tonight. Uh, I had been meeting in the sanctuary to do these online classes, but uh, two reasons. One is our cord that makes the sound uh, louder broke last Sunday morning, and some people said they couldn't hear the message. So I thought it would be better to uh, return back to my office where people could hear the uh, uh, sound until we get the cord replaced and the second thing is is I just got through with COVID and I'm still a little bit weak and so I really don't feel like standing up so forgive me tonight I'm going to sit in my chair in my office and uh, teach this uh, lesson <clears throat> let's read 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 6 through 12, and and I've entitled this message, Stay Away from Evil, Fake Believers. You say those two things don't seem to go together. Well, let's read the Word and see what the Bible has to say about that. But we command you, brethren, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition which he received from us. For you yourself know how you ought to follow us, for we were not disorderly among you, nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge, but worked with labor and toil night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you, not because we do not have authority, but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us. For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, if anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. For we uh, hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busybodies. Now those who are such, we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. Tonight's teaching is very interesting because there are some scriptures here that could be taken out of context and could make good people feel awful bad. And then there are some scriptures in here that aren't taught very much in church today and, and should be taught and believers should practice these teachings the Apostle Paul is saying to the church that they need to stay away from evil and fake believers. You see, we're living in the world, but we're not of the world. And we're to be a light shining to the world. We're salt and light, but we're not of darkness. And we should not be comfortable around people in darkness and that includes people who name the name of Jesus. And not everybody who names the name of the Lord Jesus is a true believer. There's a lot of people that are members of Pentecostal holiness churches and Baptist churches and Catholic churches and Methodist churches and so on that are just members of a church, but they're not really born again. And so we need to differentiate tonight that there are people who attend church, but who are not true believers. There are people who name the name of Jesus, who say, I am a believer. Well, Satan's a believer, but he's definitely not making an end to heaven. He's got a place reserved for him in the lake of fire that burns forever and ever. We're not to... Uh, stay away from unbelievers. We're not to be fearful of people who drink or take drugs or who are into adultery or other sinful behaviors that are lost. Lost people act like lost people. And we are to befriend them and we are to 
love on them and be kind to them and show them the true love of Jesus. And we are to uh, be an example, salt and light to them. But when we're talking about people who name the name of Jesus, the Bible gives us a clear commandment, not an option, a commandment. Stay away from them. Avoid them. The Bible even says to mark them which cause division among you and avoid them. If, if there's even a believer that causes trouble in the church, avoid them. Stay away from them. Don't call them and say, I missed you Sunday. That's like missing a cold or missing COVID or missing the flu. I don't miss the flu. I, I avoid that kind of thing. And that's how we're to treat people who cause splits in churches. You say, well, pastor, what are you talking about? Do you have that in your church? No, not now. Thank God we don't. Uh, but as we grow and as God begins to send new people into the church, there's going to be false people that show up. There's going to be people that show up in sheep's clothing uh, that are wolves. Um, we would be foolish if we thought because Satan himself shows up to church every single service. Uh, if you don't believe that, get in the pulpit sometime and you'll hear him speak loudly into your mind to try to tell you this or that. And while you're sitting in the church, he'll try to make a little Tommy or a little Betty or a little Susie's uh, actions get on your last nerve and where you can't hear the word of God because you're so caught up with some foolishness or you happen to notice that one of the tiles on top of the ceiling is crooked or a light bulb is blown and and so you can't even hear the word of God because you're so caught up in some little old foolishness. Well, God wants us to get past all of that and grow up in God and become mature believers. And when we find people that are uh, more worried about uh, the little light bulb that's blown than they are about the lost soul that's sitting on the back row, then we're, we're missing God. We're missing truth. So he says, withdraw from every brother. So he's talking about not avoiding lost people. He's talking about people who name the name of Jesus. So let's identify uh, who these people are and who we're supposed to avoid. The Bible, uh, if you do a study on the word false, just the word false, you'll find there's false apostles false prophets, false teachers, there's uh, false brethren. And so you do that study sometime and you'll see that the church has always had a problem with people who name the name of Jesus but are false. They are truly not born again. Why is it so important to stay away from false brethren? It's because they'll lead you into error. And what will error do? Error will lead you to backslide, and backsliding will lead you to hell and uh, or the lake of fire. If you happen to make it through uh, the tribulation, you won't go to hell. You'll go to the lake of fire. Um, you might be thinking, well, Pastor, none of us is perfect. And so if that's the case, we couldn't hang around anybody. We, we couldn't hang around any person because nobody's perfect but Jesus. That's true. But we're talking about people that are not uh, just making mistakes or falling into the trap of Satan or falling into sin or, or they make mistakes or they, they, they sin in error you know, and, and they don't, they're unaware or, or they're blinded by the enemy. We're talking about people who maliciously, knowingly commit error and will lead you into error and lead you into untruth. And so it's those kind of people that we must avoid. <clears throat> it was essential that the early church remain pure because they didn't have the written word of God 
And so it was so vital that people walked in holiness and purity and stayed true to the teachings of the apostles. Well, you and I, we have the written word of God, so we have an advantage. We can go to chapter and verse, and we can say, no, we don't hold to that because the Bible says, and then we read what the word says, and we do what the word says. And if somebody says something different than the written word of God, I don't put much stock into it. Boy, if you go to YouTube today or Facebook, you can, you can hear every Tom, Dick, and Harry's opinion and every Tom, Dick, and Harry's uh, thoughts and revelations. And let me tell you, be careful about these revelations. Not all of them are accurate. If they can't back it up with, Thus saith the Lord, they need to say, This is what I feel in my own heart. Or this is what I feel like the Lord has revealed to me, but this is my opinion. Nothing wrong with that. And you can pray about it, and maybe the Lord will let that set in your spirit, and you'll feel that that's truth too. And you can, you can go with that. But you can't say, thus saith the Lord, about anything that is not in the written word of God. So you've got to be careful about that. It's just as important today. And that's why Paul's reminding us in the written word of God that he who walks disorderly and not according to the traditions which was received by the apostles uh, needs to be avoided. Uh, be careful of people. Uh, be careful if a man or a woman walks disorderly and not according to the written word of God. Be leery of them. Be leery of their teaching and of their words. If you get the heebie-jeebies from somebody, not just because it's something that you've never been taught before, but just the heebie-jeebies uh, like something's wrong with this. This is evil. Uh, I, I, I don't, this don't bear witness in my spirit then you take it to the Word of God and you research it. And if the Word says it's true, I don't care how many heebie-jeebies you get, if the Word still says it's true, then you just got to correct yourself to accept something that you're just not used to. But if it gives you the heebie-jeebies and you go to the Word and the Word says it's wrong, then it's wrong all day long. And so you've got to heed to what the written Word says. Uh, Paul goes on to say in verse 7, For you yourselves know that you ought to follow us, for we were not disorderly among you, nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge, but worked with labor and toil night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you, not because we do not have authority, nor to make ourselves an example of you, how you should follow us. For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, if anyone would not work, neither should he eat. Now, let me explain this. Some people take this scripture out of context. Today in our society, and even in back in Jesus' day, if there were people who were disabled, uh, they uh, were worthy of alms. The church gave them alms. They helped the poor. They helped the needy. They helped the disabled. Uh, people who had farms were instructed to leave a corner of their crops so that the poor could come and, and get assistance by picking their, uh, their corn and their barley and their weed and their other things, olives and so forth, that they needed to sustain their lives. And, uh, and today we have set up disability for those that are disabled through Social Security in the United States. And uh, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing shameful about getting a Social Security check or a disability check or a SSI check. Nothing wrong with those things. Those are set up for people who need those benefits. And they earned those uh, through their disability. But we're talking about people in Paul's day who could have worked and were not disabled 
and they were uh, going about being busybodies. They were going about uh, spreading malicious untruths. They weren't holding to the teachings of the apostles. And uh, so they were spending their efforts to try to lead people astray and lead people onto a course of destruction. So you and I, we've got to make sure we don't lead people astray. We got to lead people to God. We can't tell people what we think in, the, in this old noggin of ours. We've got to tell people what the written word of God says. We've got to tell people what God's word says about the situation, not our own opinion. There's a lot of people who say, well, I don't really think there's anything wrong with that or, you know, what, what's the big deal about this or that? Well, let me tell you, friend, it's a sin if the Word says it's a sin. I was uh, scrolling through Facebook um, early this morning and I noticed a person that named the name of Jesus that was in their underwear and uh, they were singing some song. Well, folks, you don't publicly put your body exposed in underwear uh, on Facebook and call yourself a Christian. Uh, that's not Christ-like. That's not, that's not godly. And we can't say, well, it's okay that they do that. No, it's not okay that they do that. There's people that uh, do sinful things and and they say, well, it, it, it's not that big a deal. Well, it might be a big deal if they're leading somebody into hell. And uh, so we've got to correct those type of people. But the shame is most of those people don't stay in a church long enough under a godly pastor to be corrected. And we live in, a, in, in Waycross where there's over 300 churches. And so if, if, if they came to my church and I get on to them, and I say, you know, you can't do that kind of thing. They're going to just go to the next church down the street. And they're going to welcome them with wide open arms. And I remember I had a lady one time that stole some money from the church. And she was a good person. And I believe she really was a Christian. She got caught up in um, uh, not being used to having money. And uh, the temptation overwhelmed her, and I believe she fell in a moment of weakness, and she stole some money and just said, well, I deserve that. I, I do this work for the church, and so I, I deserve this money. Well, when I found out what she did, I went to her and I confronted her, and I said, Sister, you, you can't do that. You're going to have to replace that money back in the ministry. That's stealing. And you can't be in, in that ministry and steal money. And she said, well, I didn't steal it. I, I deserve that money. I said, no, you have a board of directors and they appointed you a certain amount of money and you took above what was given in that agreement. So therefore you stole that money. She got mad at me and told me off and left the church and went to a, another church just a few miles down the road. Well. Thankfully, that pastor was a Bible-believing uh, man of God, and he called me on the phone, and he said, uh, this lady said she attended your church, and she wants to get involved in this particular ministry in my church now, and can you tell me something about her? I said, yes, yeah, she needs to come home, and she needs to repent, and then if she feels led to leave my church and go work in your church, I give her my blessing but she needs to replace the money she stole and she needs to steal no more he said thank you for telling me that I'm gonna send her home well she never came home she left his church too and went to another church where a man didn't follow the teachings of the Word of God and didn't correct her and so she just went on stealing and went on and probably died and went to hell because she was a thief and there are no thieves in heaven. You say, well, she said the sinner's prayer, and she believed that Jesus died and rose again, so she's born again. No, no. If you are a thief, no thief will make it into the kingdom of, of God. 
So you've got to you've got to apply the whole word of God and not just your little snippets, you know, not the little things. And that's why Paul's saying so importantly, don't fall for these for these preachers and teachers and false believers. Um, it was not a sin for Paul to receive a salary. In fact, several churches that he pastored and uh, preached at sent him money, and he received uh, money from those churches. But when he got to the church at Thessalonica, it was for some reason that's not apparent to us um, that uh, they believed that, uh, that uh, preachers were only after their money. So Paul felt very convicted in his spirit and prayed about it, and God gave him a job where he worked as a tent maker. He wasn't a tent maker in every church that he pastored. He was only a tent maker at the church at Thessalonica because they uh, would have believed he was in it only for the money. And because it was such a problem there, he was overly protective of the reputation of the ministry so he went and got a job but that's not a clear uh, saying that a pastor can't receive uh, pay uh, in fact the Bible even says it's a you know don't mu muzzle the ox that tread upon the corn you know there's a script there's scriptures that teach us that the uh, servant is worthy of his hire the Levites were taken care of in the Old Testament by, the, by God's people. And the Lord instructed them on how to take care of them. And so they didn't hold jobs uh, like the other tribes of Israel did because that was how God set it up. And the ministers are supposed to be taken care of by the church. Um, sometimes a pastor has to work. Uh, to supplement his income or to uh, take care of his family. Nothing wrong with that. But there's also nothing wrong with the church taking care of the pastor. Um, but let's get back to the point. He says, uh, we hear in verse 11 that some who walk among you are in a disorderly manner and are not working at all but are busy bodies. Here's one of the main problems that Paul was addressing with this church. There were people in the church that didn't work, that mooched off of the church people, that made them feel guilty to give them money so that they could be taken care of, and then all they did with that money was eat those people's bread while they went around spreading untruths and we're more concerned about people's lives. And you know what? Say what you want to, but a lot of God's people are more interested in gossip than they are hearing the truth of the Word of God. They're more interested to hear about Sister Sally and Brother So-and-so, or this one's sin, or this is this one sleeping with this one, or is this one drinking, or is this one you know, uh, doing this or that, than they are about the truth of the Word of God. I want to know more about the Word of God than I do about Sister Sally and her sleeping habits and, and what she's doing. And don't come and ask me about any of those, those things. I don't want to get into none of that. Thank God we don't have a Sister Sally in our church. I'll have to change my illustration. Praise the Lord. But busybodies, that's people who spread all kinds of stories. In fact, the actual definition of the word busybody in the Greek is to bustle about uselessly, to busy oneself about trif trifling, needless, useless matters. So it's important that God's people not be so concerned about useless matters, but be concerned about lost souls and about building the kingdom of God. Now, it's unfortunate that there's a lot of God's people that uh, are more concerned about those other things. And those are the ones that Paul says, stay away from those kind of people. They're not going to help you get closer to God. They're not going to help you get the baptism in the Holy Spirit. They're not going to help you 
to receive the gifts of the, of the Holy Spirit. They're not going to receive the gifts of, of God. They're not going to help you mature into the um, fruit of the Spirit. So you stay away from those kind of people. And you get around people that are going to motivate you to study the Word of God, that you can uh, discuss the Word with them. And, and uh, I love talking with Michael Rulin. He and I um, uh, go back and forth with uh, scriptures, and we talk about the Word of God. And it's, it's so refreshing to have a friend like Michael and uh, who's a student of the Word of God and wants to learn more about God's Word. And uh, we're able to share scriptures and he brings things to my mind I never thought about and I bring things to his mind maybe he hasn't thought about and, and we're able to, to do that. And that's the kind of friends that you need to have in your lifetime that you can batter about the Word of God and grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now tonight, are you growing in God? If you're not, I hope you're not uh, hanging around gossips. I heard a preacher one time say, Sister so-and-so, you need to come up here and lay your tongue on the altar. And then he said, oh, oh, no, never mind. The altar's not long enough. <laughs> and I, I laughed at that when I thought about it. But uh, the, it's sad at the same time that the altar that's normally about 11 feet long is not long enough for a gossiping tongue. God give us grace not to be a gossip, but to be a gospel sharer in Jesus' name. Would you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, help us not to be a gossip. Help us not to be a person that, that carries things, even if they are true that are harmful to people's character, that we're not assassinators of character, that we are people who discuss the Word of God with people and not just uh, trifling matters that really don't matter about things. Help us, Lord, to be carriers of the Word of God and not carriers of uh, maliciousness. Help us, Father, to avoid people who uh, are harmful to our Christian experience and that we will stay true to you in every way possible in Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hope to see you live in the service Sunday morning. Hope everybody's better and, and, and able to be in the house of the Lord and that we can uh, come together and be a part of the family of God. We'll see you Sunday morning. God bless you. Have a good rest of your week.